Hello, sons and daughters of God. It is a pleasure to have you joining me for this segment. We'll be talking about this throughout the month. My name is Bonnie Maria Andrews, and please subscribe down below. And the thing is, I want to remind you before we get on to this, okay, that Jesus came here for sinners. This is not to condemn you or uh, get you in a place where, where there's, you know, redemption. It is to put you in a redemption. It's to repent. And the thing is, at 49, I'm 49 years old, and I still, just last week, realized there was something in the spirit. The spirit will always bring back into remembrance things that happen in your past so and it's and like I've said many times before to all of you that the spirit will bring back into remembrance of things that happen in your past when you are ready to remember them okay um, this has kind of been a really hard segment for me because I, it's bringing back memories and stuff and at 49 years old I realized and the Lord gives us rules and laws it's just like in um, oh gosh Luke 6 46 he says why do you call me Lord Lord and do not do what I tell you or what I say it depends on what translation you're coming from so, and we're sitting here, we're talking about sex and how the spirit is so connected when you become one flesh. And, um, I mean, put a thumbs up if this resonates with you, what I'm fixing to talk about. It's just like, when you have that first sexual relationship, maybe it's just for the moment. People do not realize just what's going on in the spiritual realm when you do that. It's just like this. It's just like when it comes to a relationship and you depart, okay, there's so much pain. It's almost as though you've lost a part of yourself and then you have that feeling like you're like you're dying you know there's no cut there's nothing physical going on and that's like the worst pain ever okay because there's really not much you can do about it okay so that's that tear in the spirit when a relationship is not is separating that person takes a part of you with them always Okay, now this is why it's really crucial for repentance. When you realize this, you can ask that Jesus, you know, by the blood of Jesus, cleanse this spiritual person that I was one flesh with. Okay, break that stronghold. Okay, but there's so much going on out there. People are struggling in their other relationships, in their marriages, because they're competing with the people that came before them. And that's why this is so crucial. If um, you have relationships and you find yourself uh, cheating and having sexual relationships with other people, okay, you'll find it hard when you get married to stay to that person and stay true to that person. Okay, and then there's this is why you find a lot of men and women unhappy in their marriage is because they still have that, that cell memory, that record, that, like I said, science has caught up with itself. Okay, where we have that cell memory of sharing two souls together as one, meeting as one. So you still have that memory, and a lot of this happens that a person we're struggling and we're struggling to make the relationship work when we still have them strongholds from the relationships way before that. Okay, this is how um, 
Have you ever noticed a friend or a family member that uh, starts up a new relationship and the person starts to change? Okay, it's because you have become one and that spirit, you've opened up the door for more spirits Okay, and a lot of this is going on with the youth and even with us, you know, no matter how old you are, this still happens when you don't have that understanding of what kind of sin you've, you have uh, done and opened the door. Now, now, now there's no way... Let me see, is it still going? Okay. There's no way that you can be, if you're not in harmony with God, then you're not going to be in harmony sexually with your spouse. Okay, this is why a lot of relationships, we go backwards. We do the sex. You know, it's just like, I even used to use this phrase all the time. You know, I don't want to buy the horse until I test drive, until I've rode them, or I don't want to buy the car, <laughs> you men out there, I don't want to buy the car until I've test drove it. Okay, that's where, now when you're in harmony with God and you're, that's why the re, a relationship should always be first, should be God. Okay, so when you, two fleshes come in as one, when you're in harmony with God, the sex is always going to be agape love. It's going to be tremendously wonderful. Okay? There is no problem there. Okay? And unfortunately, as humans, with our sexuality, we believe that we have to test drive. <laughs> so, and then the thing is, is that then you get in a relationship just, you know, I want to share this with you. Um... It's just like I had had a boyfriend. Yes, I was engaged with him. But, of course, I had sex with him first. Okay, and I always wondered. There was only a couple times that I had sex that it was good. And all the rest of the time. He couldn't even kiss me passionately. Like, if there was only a handful of times that I ever remember him kissing me passionately. So, when it comes to having intercourse with someone... You're sharing a spirit and becoming one. And this is exactly why we end up losing ourselves. Because we're competing with the people before them. Or, or the people that we had before them. Or just like the unhappy marriages and relationships. Um, the unhappiness is because of the burden of competing with the people with the other person that had had intercourse with the other one you always are thinking that is there something better I can do and um and it's just like you know what if you're a rape victim or in any case of that matter where someone has shared your soul and you've come together as one whether you want it or not, it creates a scar in your body, in your spirit, in your soul. It That's why when we go from one relationship to the next relationship, and, and, we're, and we're never, we're be, lots of times when you have an intercourse, it pulls you away from God. Okay, and the spirit knows this. So that's that's where concerns and worries, it's not concerns, but it's worries come in about why do I feel this way? Or the uh, worries of, that's so why I'm trying to change my words, worries and concerns are, are two totally different things. When you have intercourse, okay, it is a ritual. Really think about this and ask yourself this question, just like I asked um, on the 4th of July. 
you know, ponder on this. Ask yourself, do you want to? And, and the thing is, is lots of times we don't even know the person that we're attracted to. I mean, like literally know them. We just know that we're sexually attracted to them. And um, you got to ask yourself, do you really want to share intimacy or, or sexual relationships and make have your soul connect with another soul so closely that you become one soul so it for you know even for just that moment and the thing is I don't care who you are you always end up thinking okay was that good enough I mean really think about it was that good enough um, especially young ones out there um, there's a boy you like a lot and you know just you just want to feel good okay even if it's just for that moment you are gonna think about the girls that he had before you or vice versa the man you know the men have made it have taken a secret and have made it perversed in God's eyes in other words like it's no big deal it's you know and the thing is, is that in a world that we live in now, that it's become a normal. There's no, you know, suicide rates. There's 40, I think, let me get this right here. There's 45% of suicides in the world that are based on confusion of sexuality at that. Okay, and the pleasure that you get in the moment and then you then your mind's pondering you know is is this good is this you know that's the spirit because when you come in as one flesh it's supposed to be for eternity for forever you're supposed to be devoted that is the way the spirit works so this is why these things creep in okay of course the devil uses his little tools to try to give us excuses like the biggest excuse i'll get from gentlemen is well if god didn't want us to have sex then why why would he tell us to multiply <laughs> okay and this is the very reason god gave us a many gifts even science is adding up to how god has created our body to do things that we didn't even realize okay like orgasms to have an orgasm okay science has realized that at childbirth okay to speed up to speed it up being in labor you can you know your spouse can help you have an orgasm so that every time you're having a labor pain okay you're having pain and pleasure at the same time and it speeds it up the birth so it's like it's the same way it's like that's how you conceived you had an orgasm and you conceived a child and you can have it in the same way to have the child this also helps um if you're wanting to have your child completely normal with no drugs at all there the, this is what you can do to speed up the, the process and give birth to your child so there's there's this thing that the Lord gave us marriage to quench our desires and man, man, you know, we're not supposed to be run by man's law, but man will say, well, if food is, you know, is given to us to fulfill our appetite, then why can't we go ahead and eat sex too to quench our desires just like our desires to eat food, okay? Just like I've said plenty of times, there's all kinds of addictions from sex to drugs to uh, anything that is compulsive, okay, that is how it intermerges with the fact that God did not tell us to go around multiplying the world 
and having sex with all kinds of people. There's so many of us out there, or you men out there, that you'll be in your 40s or 50s and you got someone knocking at your door and it's your child, you know, that you may have only had sex with that woman once or twice or so and, and here's this baby. So, the desires, God gave us instructions. Everyone will say, I've used this too. Everyone will simply say, well, parenthood, well, there's no, there's no book on parenthood or there's, well, there is, there's plenty of books out there and it wraps and most of them out there are the same thing. It's in the Bible. Everything that we've gone through is in the Bible. The instructions, the laws, the do's and the don'ts are in the Bible. Okay, and it's just like our desires, it, it's like, okay, say you have a sexual desire and you just can't stop. You know, I've even done some like studies and in, in some of, I, I can't, I think it's Protestant or I can't think of the other one, but masturbating. Okay, and it's, it's in Matthew 5, I believe. And like I said, please, a lot of you guys can call those out really, really easy. You put them in the comments below. I'd love that. That's fine. And um, where it says to cut off your right arm if it is not serving you. So we've got these boys that are masturbating and they can't stop it. Okay, so they think that cutting it off is going to, you know, like I said, just like the drinking of the blood out there. Stop doing this. Jesus came here and shed his blood for us to save us from our sins. Okay, so when you have a de sexual desire that is compulsive, okay, this is how... It, 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 you can't just stop it because you want to. And, be, and in your heart, you want to stop this stuff, but you can't just do it. Okay, and that's the thing. That's why prayer is essential. All you got to do is repent and ask the Lord to remove these strongholds of the people that you had intercourse with your whole life. Okay, that literally breaks the curse. Okay, so that you can start working on yourself so that you can have a healthy relationship instead of bouncing from one relationship to the next relationship to the next relationship and having pretty much the same problems from the first relationship you had. Okay, so with this being said, any method that abuses or corrupts the body that God has given us is a shame and a mockery to the gospel. It cuts off the testimony that people could otherwise give the Lord. Christians must get rid of sexual diversity. <laughs> I can't believe I said that. Sexual diversity in order to, how would I say this? In order to live life that are holy in the Lord, okay, you come to awareness of the things that you once did. Okay, it wasn't going. Okay, um, God is very extremely interested in our well-being all the way to sex. It's just like he gives instructions for things that are on cleanliness. You know, you're not to have sex and and not wash and bathe yourself especially if you're to touch anything that's bleeding you know what what it comes to even you know like deadly corcuses or like i said a woman that's on their period you know you are to clean yourself cleanliness you won't be clean you know until you know six hours later or he doesn't say six hours later but he says the next evening you know if it's in the morning you know you won't be clean until the evening you know um he gives instructions 
deep instructions. And I and it's in Leviticus 15 that even I, I can't remember what verse it is, but Leviticus 13 gives you detailed instructions of what not to do. Okay. It's just like um my daughter-in-law, which she wasn't my daughter-in-law at the time, she was only my son's daughter or son's wife or son's girlfriend. <laughs> And I met her father, and I ended up having a relationship with her father. And, of course, you know, just like any other relationship, it was great at first, you know. Um, he kind of attached, our two souls attached when he started singing to me. And it just felt good in the moment. And it, even I thought it was really cool how, you know, my son's dating his daughter and now I'm dating the father okay there is instructions on this that is a no no so like I said at the beginning things the spirit will bring up things from the from our past when we are ready when we're not condemning ourselves you know thinking that we're that we can't come humbly to the Lord to forgive us so um, the spirit will bring up things that we forgot, even like I've said in previous videos, um, if you're an alcoholic and you no longer drink, you know, many years later, the spirit will bring out remembrance of things that happened while you were drunk, you know, and um, the spirit's always, I found this to be true for myself and many others, the spirit will always bring that memory in because the spirit knows that there's somebody else that might be doing the same thing or be in pain and that their spirit is searching out a spirit to help them before before they end up so deep in it that they they self sabotage themselves they think they're not worthy they think that you know it's just helpless you know it, it there's just no way there's no turning point for us and um then we just accept these things as a pleasurable thing at the moment. <laughs> so, if you're in a relationship, a marriage, you know, that's what the, I, I believe strongly that's what this Holy Spirit's been putting in my heart, because I also have grandchildren that are, they're teens, so, and he put in my heart as well, is that, you know, the separation of families, separation of marriages, okay, we're finding ourselves competing with the fact that there was ones before or there may be ones even, you know, maybe there's a separation and you decided to have another relationship way too soon. Okay, and I wanted to really, I know he's put this in my heart for forgiveness, forgiveness, because the thing is, is that we're not doomed Okay, once we get in a relationship with God, He will sh show us, the Spirit will guide us and show us. Okay, so, it's just like um, the book of Hosea. God commanded him, because the nation, the nation was just perverted, you know. You can't live a Christian life that's surrounded by perversion, Okay, and once you realize where the perversion is, okay, and like I said before, it's a compulsion of perversion, a compulsion of conversion. <laughs> I hate when I have that. Let me try to say it again. A compulsion of perversion, being perverted, a compulsion of it. Now, there's even some people that has also been in like, major tragedy and I've noticed I've noticed that a lot of like uh, military people that they're old and that's the only way that they can find peace okay even myself many many years ago I thought okay I'm not gonna be a prostitute I'm not a prostitute Although, there was times, it, you know, I worked at a bar, okay, and I used my flattery, you know, to, you know, with perverted men. 
<laughs> okay, but some sometimes um, the the person is so wounded, and these are like you know military vets. They're so wounded that the, that's the only kind of peace that they can feel upon their body. Okay, and what I'm teaching here, okay, it doesn't have to be that way. There's other ways to do this. Okay, when you realize there's a compulsion of perversion. Perversion. I think I'm saying that right. Okay, I apologize for that. Okay, it's just like Hosea. God, he's a prophet. God told him to go marry the woman of the night, and she was a prostitute. Okay, and even after she had a child, children, I think she had two, um, she ended up going back to her old ways. And this happens to us too. You know, we'll turn towards God and then something will distract us or, or you know, the enemy tries to draw us back in, you know, with excuses of how it's, oh, it's okay to be that way. It's normalized all over the TV. How can you get away, f away with it, you know, get away from it? So it's the compulsion. Okay, so... Um, Hannah? No, I don't think it's Hannah. I can't remember the prostitute's name. But Hosea loved her so much, he went out and got her and brought her back home. He forgave her. He had... This story is just... It's so bizarre and strange in the world that we may be living in that... Some men would think, how, how, can, how can anyone do that? Maybe you're in a divorce right now. Maybe you're in a separation right now. And your woman's doing the same thing. And she's going out. And it doesn't matter. Having multiple sex partners. Or even one. It's perversion. It's a... It sort of is an addiction. Okay. And... The forgiveness, it, it's such a beautiful story that he loved her so much, he forgave her. And the thing is, is that they lived, I can't remember where it's at, but anyway, they lived in a nation that was filled with perversion, okay? And it was, a, God wanted Hosea to act out the love that God had upon, even upon that dirtiness on that nation. And I know this, you read, you read Hosea, I'm telling you that a lot of these stories in the Bible simply reflect the world that we are in today. So it, like I, like I said earlier, okay, there is always a story that you can, you can go in the Bible, pray, ask for them strongholds to be cut off. And no longer a part of you because when you have in multiple partners you are sharing the spirit okay because like I said many times before when you are born you are assigned spirits to protect you okay so that's why that's why even like I share this one story with you this gentleman you know like I said, a lot of a lot of men just it's no big deal. A lot of women, it's no big deal. Okay, and they go and they have sexual relationships. Oh, just say it's just a one night stand or it's a friend friendship with benefits and they go and they're they're having sex off and on. I apologize for that. They're having sex off and on and the thing is is if you pay attention, okay, just like this gentleman there's a couple of them actually. I really like the story that he shared with me last year. Anyway, he went, he, he just didn't understand why he was depressed and felt this heaviness and stuff like that. He wasn't motivated like, like he always was, you know, to get up in the morning. It's just like some, you'll have a sexual relationship with someone. You just want to lay in bed and, or you could just lay in bed forever, you know, having intercourse together and sharing your, your bodies and making it one, you know, you don't want to move. And then, and then eventually, of course you got to get out of bed and then you go on and just like this gentleman, I mean, 
he really didn't understand why he was getting depression. I didn't either. Okay, because everything he was telling me at first really didn't, it just didn't add up. And what it was is there was something that either he didn't want to say, or, or I really think that he didn't know. Because um, like a year went by, okay, <laughs> and he met up with this woman again and started having sex with her again, and then he started feeling this heaviness again, okay. Um, this is what happens. People could lose their jobs over this because they don't. They they got this fear that they you jumped a gun. You know, and the spirit knows this. Okay, and then then you start worrying, oh my gosh. Or, or you start thinking about a future life with this person. Okay, this gentleman I'm talking about, he had no intentions of being married with the woman or anything like that. He just, you know, she really, what it was is that she was having multiple partners Okay, and it was, you know, like booty call. <laughs> so he didn't even realize really in his spirit that he did want something and he did want to settle down. Okay, but he didn't understand because he had been, he never felt this heaviness before. So until the pattern repeated itself, he really did already know Okay, but he needed guidance. This is why we go to the Lord patiently and humbly for guidance. He's our counselor. You know, I'm your spiritual, your spiritual warfare consultant, you know. Um, the Spirit will connect you to people that are feeling even that need help. Or the spirit will connect you with people that are feeling the same distort or lack of love and we have this this distorted image that having sex with someone makes us feel good but in reality if you think about it it's only a temporary fix okay and then you're you, you know you've caused yourself all this pain so anyway so what I'm what I'm really getting at is like forgiveness and understanding that even though you shared flesh in one So like I said what I really wanted to get on out there was the fact that with Hosea if Hosea can do it and forgive and, you know, this is also, you know, the thing is, is that one partner might be willing to do it. Do the work anyway, even if the other partner's not doing it. Okay, because the thing is, is that this stuff will, this stuff the Lord puts in our hearts will serve you for time and time and time again. So, Hosea... Find yourself like Hosea because he was an example to everyone else that where forgiveness can take you, where real true love can take you. Okay, so really what I, I also want to give you some of the verses to look at in the Bible so you can do your own research because the thing is, is that once you get your mind renewed and you realize that your body is the temple of Christ, okay, and that your body is not your own, it was bought by a price, okay, you start looking at this from God's lens into things and then you realize what a heathen you really truly were. <laughs> So, anyway, um, let me let me do this real quick. All right, I got it wrote down here, and I'm going to say this. <laughs> okay, you start in Corinthians, one Corinthians six twenty. For ye are bought with a price; 
Therefore, glory God in your body and in your spirit, which are God is which are God. It's the the body. Your body is God, is God's. Exodus twenty fourteen. Thy shall not commit adultery. Period. 1 Thessalonians 4 3 for this is the will of God even your sanctification spirit sanctification cleansiness that ye shall abstain from fornication stop seducing people stop you know and there is a very big difference between having a joyful life and I found this to be very very true as I start to try to do a little dating and get into know and and I know the Lord has a, the perfect man for me but I'm in no rush so I've noticed that my cheerfulness and the way my energy is and stuff like that men are very attracted to me and, and the thing is is that some men will say you know that to, to look at me I'm nothing of their desires nothing of a, any women like they've ever been with and that's a difference okay is that when when you're joyful in the spirit all the time okay it can be a it's a misleading to the ones that are still compulsively looking for joy and happiness in a sexual act okay there's a difference between you know seducing somebody is like seducing with your words and and your eyes and touching them and you know th that's the thing is that when you find yourself with men that are you know they're still they need they need that desired quench you know like food is supposed to be and that's their excuse you know why not sex you know i'm needing it i'm in need you know woe is me i feel like i'm you know i feel so depressed and heavy and the thing is is that that depression and that heaviness and that loneliness okay is your spirit attached to the other ones that you have had passionate sex with Okay, and this is what makes you feel like you're in a trap and you just got to find it and it doesn't matter where you really find it. Okay, so there is a very big difference, okay? And that's the thing is that you can come humbly to God and you can ask Him, please. You don't even have to beg Him. He will do it immediately. When you are praying from your heart and you truly, truly are not coming up with all these excuses of why you have this, this compulsion desire controlling you okay you expect and you're ready and God will break that bond immediately and then you all of a sudden you, you just you, you you realize that you don't need that anymore for joy enjoyment God is inside you the temple God lives inside you okay Jesus came here not to condemn us he came here to save us Okay, this is, you know, stop sabotaging yourself and saying, oh, well, who cares? Okay, because the thing is, is that when you can find joy and you really realize that he lives and he abides inside you and your body is his temple, you will find that the desire to do those old fleshly things will just vanish and disappear and you'll realize that, other people may even think that you're alone and you know the the way you live and you're just joyful and happy and you don't really need to get around people or have some kind of make out session to feel good okay because even a kiss and i used to even run around kissing everyone you know it's just such such love first not everyone but you know i'd have a passionate kiss with someone you know and that is what i'm saying that is seducing people to get them to do what you want them to do okay you got to understand this and when you understand this this is awareness and this is the victory already won okay sometimes you just feel like there's just no escaping these things okay and the thing is is that you let go 
when you're ready to pray to God and you ask Him, like I said, I hate using that word ask. It's almost like you command the devil to flee and go. All those partners you shared your body with is gone, it's done, it's in the past. God has wiped your slate clean. Okay, then you can start work. He, the Spirit. When Jesus shed his blood for us for his sin, okay, he did that so that and then he left so that he could bring the spirit to help us. So many times we don't realize the spirit is always with us. We're just not paying attention or we just simply don't want to. So anyway, get back to this. Judith one, Jude, Jude one four. For certain individuals who condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who preserve, perverted the grace of our God into license for immortality and denying Jesus Christ our only salvation and Lord. And it's just like I said earlier, okay, um, even in the past, you know, the thing is, is that history will repeat itself, but history is very important. That's why we find these stories in the Bible, just like David. David, David was, he was great, and he had a desire to have this woman, and when he sent his soldiers out to fight, he deliberately had this woman's husband killed. Okay, he paid that price. Okay, and it's just like, there's another one. Let me see. So, think about it from now on. Think about it. Put that thumbs up. Please subscribe down below. And I also have a page on uh, Facebook, Life Changing Grace. And we'll be talking about this on Monday. It's, it would be the 12th, the 12th of July at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. So start realizing that the act of sex is a symbol. It is a symbol of spirituality, of our sexuality, spirituality. It is not to be divided it's it's as one you come together into one flesh so you know the bible uses marriage adultery and prostitution and and other sexual related acts to demonstrate spiritual facts okay so all the way from and they think that it's in deuteronomy as well but leviticus let me see. Let me see. Uh, okay, here we go. Leviticus 6, 18. I'm sorry. Let's see this again. Leviticus 18. Now, these are, these are 18 critical instructions on what, who and what not to have relationships with, all the way to having sex with animals. Okay, he makes it very prompt and very, God is very, he, he's very, he's, he wants our well-being, literally. This, the, the book on life is right here, okay, just taking the time to read it, okay, will, will give you, the Spirit will show you, just like he did me last week, what is what's wrong all right <laughs> there are a lot of interruptions here but anyway this is like leviticus 15 like i said earlier okay it's all the way up to like seven days we have our menstrual period for seven days um just like uh it says right here when a man is cleansed from his discharge he is to count off seven days for his ceremonial cleanse and this is before you go, you know, you know, the, like the clothes and all that. But anyway, 
all of 15. Like I said, do your own research. Don't take my word for it. But this right here, I was really wanting to share with you because this is details of who you should or shouldn't have relationships, like with your cousins or your sisters or your brothers or you, you, your wife's wife or your or your what or your wife's daughter or anything like that it's just like you said and this is Leviticus 18 and we're starting from 6 to 23 do not dishonor your father by having sexual relationships with your mother she is your mother do not have relationships with her do not have sexual relationships with your father's wife that would dishonor your father do not have sexual relationships with your sister, either your father's daughter or your mother's daughter, whether she was born in the same home or elsewhere. In other words, this is like, even this follows up even with stepchildren, stepmother, stepfather. All right, do not have sexual relationships with your son's daughter or your daughter's daughter. That would dishonor you. That would dishonor your own, your own body. Okay, that's just like, that's disrespectful to yourself. Okay, um, I was raised up. My grandparents raised me up. I mean, they've told me this. You know, they've taught me this. Okay, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I didn't go and do it. <laughs> okay, when it came to, like I said, it. Um, I'll let you know which one it is. I do, okay. Do not have sexual relationships with your daughter or your father's wife born to your father. In other words, this is what we're talking about stepdaughters, all that. Stepdaughters, step sons, whatever. She is your sister. Do not have sexual relationships with your father's sister. She is your father's closest relative. Okay, it's just like when I had a relationship with my daughter-in-law's father. Same way, vice versa. Do not have sexual relationships with your mother's sister because she is your mother's closest relative. Do not dishonor your father's brother by approaching his wife to have sexual relationships. She is your aunt. Okay, now there, there is one in, so this was the story, was, uh, his name was Harold Antipas, okay, he even built the town on a burial, this is why the Jews hated him so much, okay, and he ended up, well, his brother, um, Herod II, okay, well, his brother was still alive, he took his wife from him. Okay. Um, but anyway, do not have sexual relationships with your daughter's in-law. She is your son's wife. Do not have relationships with her. Do not have sexual relationships with your brother's wife. Her Harold Octopus <laughs> did th that very thing. Okay. That would dishonor your brother. Okay, and that's the thing is Harold Hontipus, he also uh, was the one that put Paul, oh, here we go, pause. Harold Hontipus is the one that put Paul the Baptist in prison. Okay, and he has is the one that had him decapitated. Okay, because the beautiful woman, like I said, the desires and stuff this woman was seducing. He, she was dancing in front of him. She was seducing him, and he just thought that she was so beautiful. Okay, that he gave her a wish, and she turned to her mother, and her mother said which her mother, if I'm not mistaken, I could, I can stand to be corrected, but if I'm not mistaken, she went to her mother to ask her mother, and her mother was the one that was married to Harold 
Pontipus. It's just like with the sexual release. It surprises me, okay, which I could never do this, okay? Just this, the Holy Spirit had me in that bind, and I could never, not that I didn't have a chance to, but I could... Harold Hontipus was married, I can't remember her name, please put in the comments below, correct me, but um, that lady that seduced him and he said, I'll give you anything you want, anything your hearts desire. Okay, well, not that that lady was the one that danced for him was his real daughter, but the thing is, is that he married Harold the second's wife, which was her daughter, okay, not not by blood, but he already, he married her even out of the biggest sin there is, okay, and she already knew what her mom wanted. Her mom hated, absolutely hated. John the Baptist, okay, and. She felt John the Baptist was a big, humongous threat to him because Harold Hontipus was starting to, he want, he, he would have sessions with um, John the Baptist, okay? And John the Baptist would, you know, tell, you know, I will show you the way, I will show you the way, repent, you know? So... She asked for his head on the platter, and that's how Paul the Baptist died. So, that being said, there's a destruction right there. You can see it just just escalate and down spiral, and you know, and that's the thing is that when you get into these desires and stuff like that, and you come up with excuses, more comes, and then you get so consumed that if it, it literally the world around you ends up falling apart. So, do not take your wife's sister as a revival wife and have sexual relationships with her while your wife is living. Do not approach a woman to have sexual relationships during an uncleanness of her monthly period. And that's, like I said, that's in 15. That's in Leviticus 15. It's for men and women. Like I said, the Lord is so passionate and so caring and loving about our well-being mentally physically and sexually so do not have sexual relationships with your neighbor's wife and defile herself with her defile yourself with her do not give any of your children to be sacrificed to Moloch for you must not profane Profound, profound, the profound, I can't say it. Profound the name of your God. Prof, in other words, you know. Okay, I am the Lord. Do not have sexual relationships with a man as one does with a woman. That's, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about um, sexuality. In other words, uh, perversion of the same sex. Do not have sexual relationships with any animals and defile yourself with it. Think about this. You're defiling the temple of God. It's just disgusting. It's revolting. Lord forbid. <laughs> A woman must not present herself to an animal to have sexual relationships with it. That is perversion. Do not defile yourself in any of these ways, because this is how the nations that I am going to drive out before you become defiled. Even the land was defiled. Just like I said, even the land was defiled by Herod, Herod, Pontipus, <laughs> he defiled, the whole land was defiled. All right, so I punish, so I punished it for
for its sin, and the land vomited out the inheritance. So there, just know that you can humbly, no matter what it is, you know, just like, you know, you, for a while you might think, you think that there's nothing to repent, but there's always something to repent, even of your past. And the Spirit will let you know when you're ready for that. Just like the Lord, I've told you before, the Lord took my memory from me, okay, to save my life. Um, I gotten into a really bad car wreck. And for years, I, I couldn't even remember most of my children, you know, raising my children, you know. And, of course, it took three years for my, my brain to completely heal itself. And then the Spirit started working on me. And, and like I said, it's a constant change. And it's a revival, you know. You praise the Lord. And that's the last thing. Spiritual warfare. That's the last thing you want to do is praise the Lord when, when you have sinned in the past and, or something has a hold of you. You know, something that is, is controlling you. Or you're doing something to try to make someone else happy that you wouldn't normally do. Check yourself. Have patience. Okay? We're around. Yes, life is too short, but that doesn't mean that you go around expressing sexual love to everybody because um, it's always a false kind of love. And that's where the pain comes from because your spirit knows better. And you, you have your spirit and you have your soul. So... Anyway, I'm so glad you spent some time with me, and I extremely hope that you always get something from my videos. We are both teachers and students, just like when Jesus came to Paul the Baptist, you know, the teacher <laughs> became the student, then the student became the teacher. So, and that's what this is all about. So, anyway, be humble and be loving and Make good choices. Make good choices and be patient. Stand still in your spirit. And it will always serve you well. Until later, bye-bye for now. God bless you.